brothers and sisters. How are you today? So, uh, today we are having it here, as you know, because uh, Buddhist Library, uh, in response to the Doshkon uh, level orange, has, uh, down, has uh, temporarily suspended all classes. Yeah, all activities, all classes at the Buddhist Library premise has been halted. Yeah. Uh, even the, the Chinese New Year uh, distribution of Ang Pao to the, to the elderly, they have uh, instead just sent the donations in separately. Uh, uh, Buddhist Fellowship East has uh, also suspended all their programs. Uh, so the upcoming meditation is temporarily on hold. Uh, we're not cancelling it. Yeah. Uh, we are um, waiting for, for any updates from them. Uh, so then after that, uh, some students actually asked like, okay, so how about SGC? So how uh, we cannot do it at DL? Then <coughs> uh, different, different thoughts. Yeah. Uh, some students uh, felt that uh, you know no po no point taking the risk. Uh, safety first. Um, then there are, there are those who feel that we should still continue. I thought about it. Um, simply put, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if there's anyone who want to learn Dharma, I will sit down with them. Yeah, even if it's one or two person. Uh, in the past, I have had um, individuals who who are on chemo, yeah, so they cannot um, attend um, classes with a lot of people, so they request for uh, private sessions. So I've, the smallest number was one person. Yeah, uh, SGC is for the community, for your, uh, not for, not, not really for me. Uh. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, making it happen. Yeah. So, uh, some thoughts about this, and also things at large. Um, I think especially in this, uh, this period of time, uh, the, there's a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, um, and I think the Dharma, uh, that's where the Dharma comes in. Yeah. Uh, in the past, when uh, the, the university Buddhist societies, uh, there's usually a lead time where they shut down all programs prior to exams. So there was once I asked one of the society, one of the Buddhist society, I asked them, like, when exam is coming, you don't stop to sleep, you don't stop sleeping, eating, bathing, right? You still do all these things. Yeah. Uh, will that one, two hours make a difference in your exam grades? If it does, you are in a you know, <laughs> bigger problem. <laughs> yeah. So I decided that uh, as long as there are, there are individuals who, who need the anchor, the support, uh, who want to have Dharma in the midst of this, uh, SGC will continue. Yeah. Uh, unless it goes to red. Okay. I think when it goes to red, then there will be a certain directive from the country, from the state. We'll have to halt. Yeah. In which case, then we'll have SGC online. Yeah. Uh, we we'll probably do it uh, using f the Facebook Live or YouTube Live, and then uh, participants can go online. Yeah. Uh, live feed, and you can ask your questions in the comments. Yeah. Uh, there's a will, there's a way, huh? Today, I also wanted to share this uh, interesting sutta I shared with some of you all yesterday. Um, 
It comes from the Kudaka Nikaya, the, the fifth collection uh, called Small Text. Uh, and inside the Kudaka Nikaya, there are a lot of different um, sets of suttas. One of them is called the Jataka, sometimes known as the Jataka Tales. Yeah. These are stories of the Buddha's past life. Uh, in, on different accounts, different occasions, the Buddha would share uh, accounts of his past life, uh, relevant to what was happening. So there was one time the Buddha shared that a long time ago, uh, there was this uh, lion that stayed in the forest, yeah, or in, in the forest. And then he was uh, observing the, you know, he was observing and uh, he observed that there was hair, yeah. So there was this, um, some translation used rabbit, uh, hair rabbit, yeah. And this rabbit, um, he was like sleeping or something. And then uh, a large fruit fell and then make a loud sound. Bum. So he was startled, and in his uh, confusion, he panicked, and he thought that the sky has dropped, or is falling. So he ran for his life. He thought the world is coming to an end, you know. So he ran, ran, ran. And as he ran past some animals, the animals asked, like, well, where are you going? <laughs> We're in a rush. So he told the animals, the sky is falling. So one, another, one animal after another animal, soon the whole forest was running. Yeah. And the lion in the distance observed like this whole, um, whole bunch of animals is becoming a stampede. You know? um, they're going to run to their death. So the lion decided to do something. He, he ran to, to in front of them and then made a roar. Have you all heard a lion roar before? In, uh, on TV? In a zoo? The first time I heard, uh, I didn't, I, actually in my whole life I've never heard, I've never heard uh, a lion roar in real life. Yeah, how does it feel like? Nothing? Uh, I have never heard one before. But I remember when I was in Taiwan, uh, we went to the zoo. And the zoo was quite different from our zoo. Yeah, the zoo is where there are cages and there are some place, some parts which is, feels too open for me. <laughs> in Singapore, there's like multiple layer of, you know, a barrier. Yeah. So on our side, it looks like just a fence, but there's multiple layer. Yeah, the, the, the lion have to like really <laughs> climb through obstacles. <laughs> Yeah, virtually impossible for the alliance to just come out. Uh, that day, when I was in Taiwan, I was in the zoo, and out of the blue, I heard this rumble, the roar. The roar. It was so baseful, like you can feel your body uh, tremor with it. Yeah, it's just a very slow growl, and it go into a reach a crescendo, you know. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine a lion's roar would be even more resounding and impactful. And so in the Sutta it says that when that lion roared, uh, all the animals were, were like stunned, you know, and they all stopped in that pace. Um, and then the lion asked them like, what's happening, you know? So he asked the first animal, and the first animal said, Oh, the sky is falling. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm running. And then the lion asked him, like, Where do you hear it from? So he pointed to the animal who told him. And he, in turn, asked, Who told you? And he told, the Next animal. And then one animal passed on to the next until they reached the hair, which is the source. <laughs> the person, the, the, the the animal that started this whole um, stampede, you know. Then uh, the lion asked the hare, like, so where do you hear it from? Oh, I didn't hear it from anybody. 
I, I was sleeping and I heard a loud sound. <laughs> yeah. So then it was clarified that actually the sky is not falling, it's just a large fruit falling and it made a loud sound. Yeah. Uh, if not for the lion um, calling to attention all of them, they would have um, killed themselves yeah, in that stampede. Yeah. Um, I've shared this story uh, a few times mm, on my blog, uh, on uh, Facebook, quite a few times. Yeah, because and very interestingly, 2,500 years later, uh, we still see this happen. Yeah, we still see this happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, one, all it takes is one person to share one message. may not be written by that person, but the, the person gets so affected, share, and that's it. goes into a stampede of wow messages. And before you know it, everybody panic. Yeah. And these few days we see, after the Doscon orange, we see people, empty shelves. <laughs> yeah, empty shelves. We see all kinds of uh, Unfortunately, some not so uh, pleasant. Yeah, you see the empty shelves and uh, the abandoned baskets. Yeah, um, but I'm not here to to bash anyone. Uh. Um, it's uh, it's not right, but I think it's understandable. Yeah, it doesn't make it right. Okay, it's not good. It's not right. Yeah, but uh, fear, fear is a very powerful emotion. Mm. Fear can immobilize us, cause us to just freeze. It can cause us to do things we cannot imagine we would do as well. Yeah. Uh, fear can cause us to also act irresponsibly can cause us to act irrationally yeah but why do we act in all these ways mm. so fear uh, is part of the family of uh, uh, mental states yeah under defilements mm. and specifically under the category of um, the umbrella term is hatred. Yeah. Another term that is used for translation is aversion. Yeah. So when we think of fear and hatred, it seems to be polar opposite. Nah. When you are angry with something versus fearful or something, initially it may not seem to be very related. Because one is quite um, powerful. Yeah. You are, you are like, um, compelled to do something. Fear oftentimes is immobilizing. The common thread that ties these two together is there's something that we don't like, mm. something that we don't want. We are fearful of certain thing or consequences or object yeah, or state. Um, anger, we don't want that as well. Yeah, it's just a slight difference in the way we respond. Mm. So. Um, is it okay for us to be fearful? Is it right to be fearful? Like now, if let's say, uh, suddenly you hear a lion's roar. I, I, I don't know how to make a lion's roar. <laughs> okay. Like if you now really hear a lion's roar, how would you all feel? Would any of you like hearing, hearing, hearing? <laughs> Yeah, would you be practicing mindfulness, hearing, hearing, hearing? <coughs> or what would you all do? Or like what what happened? What goes on in your mind? Maybe I should give you all some special effect <laughs> while you think about it. I shall pull in <laughs> with, <laughs> with the magic of YouTube. <laughs> let's let's find lions roar. Huh? Zhao. Okay, very good. Let, let's see how fast you run, huh? <laughs> lions roar. Okay. Lions roaring compilation. <laughs> let's see. Get ready to run.
Okay. <laughs> Give you some visual so maybe it will match. <laughs> oh? Enough? Enough feeling? <laughs> If you are like me, when I think of Lion's Roar, I think of one of the movie, uh, cinema c company. They have this circle and then... Uh, 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 you know, we, we tend to think like all lions, MG, MGM, right? Yeah, we tend to think all lions, when they roar, must be... Uh, yeah, that's a whole series. Uh. Mm. Cannot run faster than a lion, do we? Huh? Cannot run faster than a lion. Who cannot run? We cannot run faster. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we cannot run. So all you need to do is look for a tree, <laughs> climb up the tree. <laughs> or, as some would say, <laughs> find out what, what's wrong with <laughs> As some would say, <laughs> don't be the slowest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So, usually for lions, if they're hunting, they will not make noise, right? No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, based on what I uh, watch on videos, uh, discovery, mm. usually when lions they hunt, they try not to make noise. Oh. Mm. Yes, they do. Uh, I mean, is that right or? Uh, if I, uh, I, I don't know really, but what you said makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and actually, that poses a very interesting dilemma. Like if you see, if you hear a lion's roar, then maybe after hearing this, the logical part of us like, well, the lion is not hunting, you know, we can continue with that, you see. <laughs> but then the other part is, wait, there's a lion. <laughs> what is the lion doing here? The, you know, so when that happens, how many of you would bet your life <laughs> on that the lion was roaring because it's not hunting? I, I, I agree to a large part with what he said. Uh, because when you see most of the documentaries, the lion would be like creeping, yeah, slowly. you know, creeping very slowly. And then, in fact, even when they make the, the final dash, they are not, <laughs> they, are, they are going there, just panting and then pouncing on it. Yeah. Um, so maybe when they roar, it's, it's, uh, it's the kind of like alpha male, um, lion against ri lion kind of rivalry. Yeah. But having said that, now if you were to hear a lion's roar, how many of you will be like, well, if it's roaring, mm -hmm. that would be okay. Yeah. And, and the, the similarity would be, like, you can see, we can, we can receive all the official information that is still okay to tell us that currently everything is still all right. Just have to make sure you don't you stop touching your face. You know, after touching, um, coming in contact with foreign uh, surfaces, make sure you wash your hands, uh, keep standard hygiene, and it should be okay. And despite that, somehow we feel like, hey, but. Hey, hey, sway, sway, you know, what if I can not? Hmm. So, that's, fear is very interesting, you know, because we can know everything, yeah, that's logical, scientific, yeah, but yet, um, when there is a possibility, hmm. fear is not about certainty, isn't it? Yeah, uh, not always. I wouldn't say, perhaps I should change, I should correct myself. It's not always about certainty or uncertainty. But oftentimes, when there's more uncertainty, there's more fear. Yeah. Uh, so in this time, uh, perhaps that's the trouble, you know. Uh, that's uncertainty. Could you lead to a delusion? Huh? Can Uh, well, 
I didn't expect to go straight into the the standard model so soon. Uh. <laughs> I usually try to avoid um, uh, bringing in the, the standard model so soon. Uh, and the reason is because uh, in our day-to-day -day life, we don't um, we don't habitually or instinctively think of our own mental psyche, our thinking in terms of greed, hatred, delusion. You know, yeah, that's not our usual, our natural way of thinking as yet. Yeah. Uh, but perhaps a choice of words. Yeah. Uh, we can say that. Um, the lack of information yeah, or uncertainty um, is part of our delusion. Uh, because if we see everything clearly, then there's no uncertainty. Yeah. But there's another thing about uncertainty which is linked to the standard model. And it is um, the one of the universal characteristics that we, we have been learning, yeah, anicca, impermanence. Anicca is uh, translated as impermanence, yeah, wu chang. <coughs> but impermanence, impermanence has another quality within it, which sometimes we we forget, which is uncertainty. And why uncertain? Because it is not simply change. It is change that is not within our control. It is change that is due to conditions, not due to our whims and fancy, not due to our decision. Because if, if we can control change, effect change, then you have no more fear of coronavirus, right? You get infected, change. No more virus, no more infection, right? Yeah. The trouble is you cannot control that change. To begin with, you cannot control whether you change from with no infection to with infection. Yeah, you cannot control that change. So it's not so much uh, change that we are afraid of, it's the uncertainty part. Mm. Uh, so that's this part. Then let's look at the, the next part, which is, okay, so why are we fearful of that? Of all the changes, why this change? Why are we fearful of this change? Like, uh, I don't know whether you all buy 4D, but if let's say, today, is there 4D today? Yes. Yes, huh? If let's say somehow you all strike 4D today, that's change also, right? Right? You know, they, sometimes they joke about, wow, like that also gonna, uh, the virus, or really can buy 4D. Yeah, but what if instead of getting the virus, you get 4D, you, you strike the 4D? That's also uncertain. That's also change. Yeah. Would you all be, when you all buy 4D, I mean, if you do, do buy 4D, are you all like anxious, like, please, please don't strike, please, please? Huh? Do you all like purposely choose a number that will not strike? No. Or what is, or uh, the opposite. opposite? Yeah, opposite, right? You try to find some number that gives you that feeling, that feeling that will strike. Yeah? Like 8888. <laughs> 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 car? <laughs> My car? 46. Four, six. I have a car? No, your sister's car. My sister's <laughs> car. Just like your, the door there. That day we don't fight. Oh, yeah. four, six, nine, six, huh? Bing Dong's car. Oh, is it? Five. I think it's five. Huh? Can I? Four D. Ah. <laughs> yeah. When you suddenly get, get some special gift, you know what happened. <laughs> mm. 
so far, um, there are those who have uh, who who got the virus um, and have perished. There are those who are still on the path to recovery, and there are those who have recovered. Yeah, it is like dengue fever. Right, dengue fever is fatal as well, but not everybody died. I don't know what is the uh, virulent factor. That means how fatal it is. Yeah. Uh, so far, they estimate the coronavirus to be about 0.2 percent. Yeah. Uh, that's about common flu, around the, the the same. Yeah. SARS is like nine percent, way higher. You know. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in all this, uh, so, so I'm just quoting what I heard. Yeah, but the infection rate is very high. Infection rate for what? For, for, the, for this virus. For this virus, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about those details because there's already, I think all of you are like swarmed with all this yeah. data already. I want to talk about the other side of the coin, which is The lion's roar. Huh? Huh? They've not heard of the lion's roar. Uh huh. So they, they either don't care when they hear the lion's roar, uh -huh. or they go and find out. They just go towards the lion's roar to go and look for the lion's roar. Oh. Then what happened to them? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what, though. Yeah, uh -huh. still uncertainty. Uh. Ah. Oh, so what she's <laughs> saying is. After, uh, because I was talking about like what what will y'all do if y'all hear uh, a lion's roar, yeah, uh, and about how fear can arise from uncertainty. Uh, so she's saying that there could be those who, when they're uncertain, they are curious and then they go and explore. True, true. Um, those early humans who <laughs> got curious that way didn't pass down the genes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, the the ones left behind like us, we are all those who are fearful of the unknown. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that run. Yeah. Yeah, we'll run and hide. Yeah, run and hide, <laughs> climb out the tree. <laughs> yeah. We can and consider uh, because for most people, we are currently, uh, we see, even if we, are, we ourselves is not very fearful, uh, we see others who are fearful. And the thing about human beings is, when you see enough people fearful, then we also start to wonder, eh, should I be fearful? You know? It's just like there was a sound, and if, you, if, if it's yourself, you may or may not turn, but if enough people turn, you may start to like, hey, maybe I should take a look at what's going on, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I want to ask you all the question. What will happen if you get the virus? Huh? <laughs> 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 Uh, well, in case if in case if any of you uh, need that kind of spiritual support, um, I I won't uh, I won't run away lah. Huh? Yeah, I'm not I'm not someone who to to run away in that way. Yeah. Uh, but maybe keep a distance. Uh. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. Different room. <laughs> Different room. <laughs> With a <the> window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you feel it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, for good reasons. Uh. Mm, for good reasons. When the Buddha saw a sick monk suffering from leprosy, he didn't shun him. Yeah. He went forward. 
asked Anand, Venerable Ananda to bring some water to wash him. Yeah. And then he called the monks over. And he asked the monks why didn't they serve this, take care of this monk. And the monk said, well, because that monk who is sick, when he was well, he didn't serve anybody. He just kakilai everything. <laughs> everything he just satu orang. One person do this. He don't, he don't do anything for others. Yeah. Now, I, oftentimes this sutta is cited for the final quote, which the Buddha say, He who serves the Buddha serve the sick. He who serve the sick serve the Buddha. Or sometimes they use the word nurse. Yeah. He who nurses the Buddha nurses the sick. He who nurses the sick nurses the Buddha. But I think within this sutta itself, it's very interesting because um, for one, it speaks about a very human part of the Sangha. That the Sangha are very human, you know. You don't serve me, what, you, don't serve, you never help us, well, why should we help you? you know, very human. Um, but it doesn't make it right. Yeah. The Buddha didn't go into a ruckus and then scold them like crazy. But he you know, took another approach to advise them. And in that sutta, he also told them something else. He said, you all have all left your family. You, know, you are all homeless, without father or mother to take care of you. If you don't take care of yourself, take care of one another, who is going to take care of you? Mm. Very touching. Yeah, so since then, every time when there's novice retreats, and sometimes uh, the, the participants, the, re the, the novice, they would be a bit, you know, habitual tendency. Do, take care of their own things first. And then I will gather them and tell them this sutta. Uh, there was one encounter, we went to, uh, what's that place? Cameron Highlands. Yeah, San Pao, San Pao, San Pao, San Pao, Wan Fu Si. Yeah. Qing Ma Lun, what is the monastery name? Uh? Yeah. So in that monastery, when we arrived, there were, there were uh, the novices came in first, and then I think there were multiple buses, because there's quite a few of us. So the first group came in, then they just snap up the food. And then the second group <laughs> came in. <laughs> then it's like, there's not so much, you know, so much, not enough. It's okay. It's just a phone. Yeah. Is it something urgent? No. Uh, how you know? <laughs> 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 it's okay. Yeah. So when I saw that, I told them, uh, I gathered them and told them this. Yeah. Uh, you are not monks and nuns. Yeah. Uh, but you can also ask yourself, in a way, we are all in this big ship called samsara, you know. Mm. We are all fearful of our life. Yeah. Uh, but if everybody is, is doing that and everybody just take care of themselves and you know, shun each other and maybe even um, to the extent of abandoning each other, then how? Mm. Already we are as, uh, some descriptions describe samsara as the ocean. And we are struggling in the ocean. That any float sand that come by, come by, we just cling on to their life. Yeah. Given that, then how can we bear to, like, if you see someone struggling and you have a large enough piece of wood yeah, that can sustain the two of you, yeah, would you like the person come, come, <laughs> and then back, <laughs> back, back? <laughs> uh, mm. uh, but even then, uh, have compassion for those who act that way as well. Mm. Uh, because it means that in them there's even more fear, you know. There's so much fear that they are doing that. Mm. Again, having compassion for them doesn't make their actions right. Okay, I'm not saying that their actions is right. Yeah. Uh, but the public shaming or condemning them 
I'm not sure whether that will get them to change, you know. <coughs> but back to the the question. So when we if we contract the virus, we fall sick. Uh, some of the things that will happen is it will affect your your lungs. Yeah, I think it will affect your lungs, right? Yeah. Um, and then depending on how well your your body's resistance is, then uh, you may start to develop symptom or not. Mm. But uh, if it if it worsens, that means your bodily system is fighting a losing war. Then you start to have breathing difficulties. Mm. Uh, can you imagine having dif breathing difficulties? If you think hard enough, if you worry hard enough, you really have breathing difficulties. You know. <laughs> Last September, when we went to Tibet, oh, there were some parts of the trip really difficult. Mm. One of the nights we were at one of the place where it's about four thousand over meters, uh, four thousand plus plus plus, uh, and it was at night, turning in already. So I was really jealous because the the day, the night before, I vomited, and then um, oh, actually there were two nights. The first night I vomited, and I was so out of breath. Even after they passed me the oxygen, like uh, didn't it, it? Kind of made me feel better. Kind of like okay, I'm having oxygen. I shouldn't be, <laughs> you know. But it was very difficult. Yeah, and especially you're trying to acclimatize and you're trying to rest, and then and yet because of the thin air, yeah, your body is not. not you know, everything is not functioning as optimally as possible. Yeah. And so that so the other day I was thinking about that and I was like, well granted it's not exactly the same, yeah. Uh, but it must be uh, it must be terrifying. Yeah. Because you are like normal, normal air and then you are breathing <laughs> but just feeling out of breath. Mm. I had dengue fever before. Not 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 recently. <laughs> Way back, uh, 1998, I think. Yeah, 1998, when I just started around. You know, sorry, 99. Yeah, huh? No, that's that's uh, chicken pox. Huh? Uh, no. Thank you. Was much later. Thank you. Was when I was working already. Mm. <coughs> 1999, I think, about 20, 20 years ago. Yeah. So got admitted. Yeah. Uh, eh, did I get admitted? Thank you, fever. I got admitted, right? Yeah. Uh, chicken pox was also very bad, but dengue fever is worse. Uh, dengue fever, the Once you get checked in, CDC, the doctor tells you that you have to be bedded. You cannot get off. Yeah. Four times a day, they come and draw blood for a sample test. So the first day was pretty relaxed, you know, own room, just take it easy. But back then, no, no social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that night was crazy because I think there was probably mild fever. Uh, so had crazy dreams, dream a lot of people come in and out of the room. Yeah. There'll be people who tell me that mm, the place is dirty. <laughs> mm. well, I don't know. Yeah. But the next morning when I woke up, first thing in the morning, you know, you go to the toilet, wash up, pee. So my bed was here. The toilet door was maybe somewhere around uh, beyond. You know, just just a few steps away. I walked halfway. I squat down. I was out of breath. Yeah, because the pellet count once it drops below a certain amount, 
you, your, your lungs are still working, everything is still working, but the, it cannot, uh, there's just not enough pellet you know, to, to, to transfer the oxygen. Yeah, so just taking a few steps, I felt like I went for a run. <laughs> I was like, and in my mind I was like, oh, okay, that's why they told me I have to wait for the nurse to come. <laughs> But me being me, I was like, ah, oh, let me just, if I have to crawl, I crawl. Up. Yeah. Then because my mom was pumping me with beetroot juice, so when I, when I pee, it was all red. I was like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. And then later, uh, I, I learned that, oh, the beetroot juice. Yeah. Uh, so in a way, I can understand the the anxiety and fear that you know, if you do fall sick, just that process. I'm not talking about death yet, uh, Just having that sickness. If you cannot have coronavirus, I, I don't think the symptom is 100 percent the same. Yeah, it's definitely quite different. Uh, you have pneumonia, bronchitis, all, all the secondary things coming up. Mm. Yeah. Would you be okay having that? <laughs> How many of you would, let's say, let's say, let's say, like let's say now we say, okay, we have found a solution. If five of you sacrifice yourself, Singapore would be saved. Like somehow, uh, the scientists say, okay, you just have five, five person step up, infect this five person. You don't necessarily die, it's just a normal infection. The rest of Singapore all, okay, can live normally. Yeah. No worries about infection. The virus made a pact with us, or just impact in in fact five of you, five of us. How many of you would volunteer and say, "Okay, come, sign me up"? <laughs> no, no one. Okay, I guess then we have to see who can. Uh, it's unfair to ask any of you. Oh, you you're gonna volunteer? Oh, you have a question, okay. No, I just have a thought, but if it happens to their immediate family, and if they were to sacrifice for their family, at least many would have done so. So, uh, the ah. difference between the sentient being and their immediate point. Mm, that's an interesting point. But the fact is, the whole of Singapore includes your family members, isn't it? Mm. If you sacrifice yourself, your family will be safe also. <clears throat> so now, with that new information, how many of you would step up and say, okay, infect me? Not going to do it for your son? <laughs> or daughter? <laughs> no? No, no. This is not a fair question. Yeah. And in fact, the question is not about whether you are willing to. This is not a question about how great your bodhicitta is. Uh, no. Um, I'm a... I'm a very uh, low-achieving monk, so I don't have that kind of grandeur idea about, wow, we must sacrifice ourselves to do this, to do that. Uh, in fact, if you ask the volunteers, I always tell them, why you sacrifice yourself in this way? <laughs> I don't believe in doing sacrifices. Yeah. Uh, I believe in, if you, f if you are really ready to do it, then just do it. Yeah. It's more about, okay, but what if you do get it? Mm. Because the, the proposition I, I gave just now seems like a difficult choice, seems like an unfair choice. But what if you do get it? If you get it, you get it already, no? At least this you got to choose. The proposition I gave, at least you have a choice. You can choose not to raise your hand or raise your hand. Mm. But what if you do get it? I, uh, I think I had this experience huh? last week. <laughs> last week? Yeah, after uh. the road show. Uh, I, I, I shared it before, uh, after the uh. road show then, I was, uh, I, I, I put it in the chat group, mm. so my colleague said that uh, I just come into contact with this, uh, this uh, tourist who come from Hubei. Oh, and, then <laughs> 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 and then I said, and then like, after talking to her halfway, I said, uh, okay, well, I think we won't be able to talk about it, I think we won't be able to talk about it, I think we won't be able to talk about it. Then I, I, I think I, I was telling 
Chinese ourselves, uh, Singaporean Chinese, Chinese Singaporean, whichever way you look at it. Um, uh, nobody would, most people would not say that we are racist if we say anything like that. Yeah, uh, but there are also some some articles or some commentary about this online, about how when similar um, epidemic happened in Western countries, no uh, no. Nobody say, oh, Americans don't come, come, come to Singapore anymore. There were some outbreaks that came from US. I think, was swine it? Flu. Yeah, swine flu was one of them, right? When the, when the bad cow disease happened, that was in the UK, right? Yeah. We didn't say, oh, hey, Amor, better run away, right? Um, despite where some of this started to have human human trans transmission already yeah so uh, why are we Chinese easy target uh? mm. <laughs> mm. so and to me uh, I, I don't ask any of you to do what I I myself would do but I'll tell you what personally I would do um, I think when certain organizations they ha they limit um, or they they put you on two weeks um, suspension or well maybe isolation, um, it is a form of um, it's a very prudent thing to do from a certain point of view. Yeah. Uh, just like how the various Buddhist organizations decided to stop the classes first. Yeah. So then the question comes back to, then why are we still having SGC? Mm. And it's the same thing as I've said earlier. Um, if, if all of you decided, okay, things are getting out of hand and we don't need SGC for now, or we can do with the online, then okay, let's do online. Mm. For me now, if let's say there's a student from China, from Hubei, Wuhan for that matter, and who arrive at my doorstep, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just say, oh, oh, oh look, you want to do small? Yeah, I think it would be very sad. Uh. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think it would be very sad. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm very great or brave or what, I'm not a very brave person. <laughs> uh, but I can't bring myself to do that. Yeah, I can't bring myself to do that. Uh, but I also realized, back then in uh, the Fukushima, the, the, the tsunami and then the nuclear power plant went, went uh, nuclear. I was so compelled that night, you know. I was so compelled, almost tearing. And I was thinking, I, I, I cannot just sit here and post on Facebook, Oh, may all beings be free from fear, free from harm, free from danger. May they be well, happy. Let's send them prayers, and you know, I I, fe I just felt 
that day I just felt this is insufficient for me. I, I need to do something. So instead of posting the usual, I posted on Facebook and asked, I'd like to go, at, go to Fukushima to do something. Is there a way, uh, like what, can, what, what is the thing to do? And a couple of students immediately responded, Sir, please don't do that. <laughs> and, and their concern is not for my well-being, more that they tell me very straight in the face, and I really appreciate it. They told me, Sifu, you're not trained. If you go there, you'll not be helped, you'll be a liability. <laughs> you'll be a liability. Yeah. And that, that kind of got me, like, kind of like, woke me up a bit. I said, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. yeah that's, that's why I didn't go. <laughs> and, and when I sit, sit back and think about it, yeah, it makes complete sense. And so compassion uh, must be coupled with wisdom. Yeah? Uh, without wisdom, sometimes our compassion can drive us to do things into f futile self-sacrifice. At the same time, intelligence and not wisdom can cause us to be calculative. You know? to, to, to really consider all the odds and say, okay, my if I were to do this, my odd of survival just drop. Yeah, then I should just go and uh, do what it takes to increase my odd of survival. Then you have all the sh empty shelf, law. Yeah, th then you have all the empty shelf because the when we only use pure intelligence that is selfish. Intelligence itself is not selfish, uh, but intelligence plus concern only for ourselves. Yeah, that sometimes can drive us to do things that actually in the long term it's not very wise. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I also told Siapusa <coughs> uh, when I, I discussed with Siapusa first before I announced on the telegram chat. And I told them, um, my thoughts are I would still want to let SGC continue in some form, but I cannot ask you all to do what I'm doing. So it will be optional. Uh, but do not look at look around and say, oh, the rest of Salbusa, oh, they, they run away. No. Some of them are not feeling well. And one of them, Valerie, she's, she's uh, down with a bit of flu. So she's like, okay, <laughs> you know, she don't want to uh, become part of the problem. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't implying anything. <laughs> but the, yes. The other thing is that, um, while we do not mind, we also think that if we are become the host, we may then complicate and create another class. So some people may say, you know, I know it's like mm. teaching, but at the end of the day, you need to think of... For sure, for sure. Yes, yes for the sure. Rest, because once you go to work and then you start to spread, you can be creating... Effect. For sure. So that's why the government is actually trying to block so as to contain for now. Yes. Uh, I, I'm all for doing what we can uh, to not become uh, a bigger problem. Yeah. Uh, the question I asked in the chat, in the Siapusa chat is, um, the government, the, can, the, the MOE has not announced stopping the classes, right? Each classroom is about 30 to 40 students in a confined space for the whole day, <laughs> almost the whole day. Ah. Uh, no, I'm talking about secondary school. Yeah. Oh. Ah. So how big is the classroom? Ah. Oh, okay. Like in NUS itself now, they say that the maximum class size you can have is 50 people in one class. So oh. if you have more than 50 people, then you have to go and split down into groups. Also. Tutorial groups, huh? Mm. So lecture groups, huh? Ah, uh, uh, even lecture? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so then, so that was my one of my considerations. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know enough about a lot of things, so I use this as a matrix and say, okay, if that is okay, then SGC should fall within that, you know, because it's not like massive. Uh, and then I was also <laughs> thinking about another thing, which is supermarket. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's more people in the supermarket. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> now probably less. Uh. Okay, <laughs> maybe. No <laughs> more things to buy. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is uh, for us to uh, reflect on the for one yeah, the there's this series of reflection that the Buddha advised the disciples to do that while we are uh, young to consider that old age will come in due time. That while we are healthy, sickness can come in due time. And while we are alive, that death can come in due time. Mm. Uh, Something to highlight about this is not paranoia. Whether we reflect on this or not, this is what is happening every day. We are on this journey where is at this point in time, time goes in one direction. Yeah. Uh, some branches of physics talk about how time goes in both directions theoretically, and then they did some uh, experimentation where they are able to uh, reverse, the, uh, or reverse the state of, I don't know, is it photon or something? Or electron? The direction that they, they is spinning or something? Yeah, there's some experimentation recently. But as yet, we are still experiencing time in one direction. Meaning, today we are this old, tomorrow we are one day older. Next year we are one year older, and so on. Yeah, that's happening. Whether it's coronavirus or flu or anything else, um, health is not a permanent state. Health is not a given state. Health is a delicate balance between cells which is alive and active and cells that is not dysfunctional. Yeah, it's a delicate balance between life and death. Yeah. It is not about um, paranoia is not about uh, pessimism as well. It's realism. Yeah. Uh, but to so to reflect on this and then to consider, given this, then how should we live our life? Mm. Not to go and rush the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. But to ask ourselves, okay. One, we, we can and should do what we can to, uh, to stay healthy. In the Vinaya, in nowhere do, did the Buddha say, uh, don't care about health. Yeah? Uh, if a person is not feeling well, must see the doctor. Yeah, if you don't, it is a wrongdoing. If you see the doctor and given prescription, medication and you don't follow is a wrongdoing yeah uh, further so if there's a place that is dangerous yeah you should not go to that place mm. so like if like in the past uh, some forests have wild animals then they are advised to avoid those places these forests have highwaymen have robbers frequenting this place Caravans have been robbed. Do not walk in that direction. Yeah, this place, the the king is marching the troops. They are going to war. Don't don't go there and go for arms row. <laughs> You're going to get killed. Uh. Yeah, things like that. Yeah. So when times come, when time comes, and uh, the situation it has worsened, then we will uh, make adjustments. Uh. And the last part of the reflection. Uh, Compassion, yeah. Whether in Wuhan, towards the those who are suffering from the uh, virus, or just the whole population in Wuhan, lockdown, quarantine, yeah. I mean, if you look at the development, it 
it looks almost like the the first season of Walking Dead, you know. Yeah. Can you imagine being in that city? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so it's heartening to see um, different snippets of people rising up to the occasion. Yeah. Uh, there are doctors and medical staff from other provinces who, you know, join the volunteer call to go in. Yeah. The troops are sent in to assist. Um, and then in, in Singapore, I think I saw this, this, uh, uh, this, this news about um, this guy with the wife distributing uh, free masks. Yeah. Uh, and even in Singapore, our medical professionals, yeah, we can say that, well, that is their job. Right? They can always say, I, I quit, la. you know? Yeah. yeah, they can. They can, they can still quit, but they choose not to quit. Yeah. Uh, so, reflect on compassion towards them, gratitude towards them, yeah. And those, not just in China, not just in Wuhan. Wuhan is just one area. Uh, multiple cities, they have started lockdown as well. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and also the rest of the world. Uh, so this is a time where we need to quieten down. Yeah. Not to get too um, too driven by our base emotion, fear and so on. Uh, I'd like to wrap up the session. Uh, if you all have no other qu thoughts or any any thoughts you would like to share? Yes, Karen? Uh, I want to ask you like if, say for example, we're on the MRT, do you think it's necessary for us to wear masks if, if you see people coughing beside you or, or sneezing or whatever? Oh, oh that's a bit tricky, huh? Huh? See the area. So, how how would that affect? Hmm. I'm glad you bring this up because uh, there are some who who attribute this simply to karma. Yeah. Uh, as with all the past, uh, whether it's an epidemic or natural disaster, my answer is always one, two, uh, two parts. First part, I don't know. Number two, I can speculate for you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, when they are quite surprised because they expect monks to know, you know, nuns to know. We must know. But Sifu, you are Sifu, ma, you must know. You know, uh, there are a lot of things I know, but there are a lot of things I don't know also. Yeah, and better for me to just tell you honestly I don't know than come out with some cock and bull story to make you feel good or worse, make you feel fearful. Um, if a person contract the virus, uh, I really don't know directly whether it's due to past karma. Yeah, I, I don't. I really don't know. He, wh whoever say that they know, they must be able to see past life karma, karmic ripening, and the whole process, which is a very high level of spiritual practice. Yeah, I suspect many times when. People say that um, they are inferring more than seeing. Yeah, but I like to be sp be be specific when it comes to this. Yeah, that if I'm inferring or I'm speculating for you, I will tell you that I'm speculating. Yeah, because it can have different connotation. If I tell you that it's an it's based on what I infer, 
that means it's still, you know, there's still some buffer, some variable. But if I tell her I see, it, yeah, like imagine, like imagine, okay, I'm not doing it. Uh, imagine I say, mm, uh, after class, uh, Choping, uh, Michael, you are still back, huh? Got something to tell you. Yeah. You are still healthy, la, okay, la, but go and prepare. Huh? Uh. <laughs> then, what if I see wrongly? Then the two of you panic until you have attack. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because the implication is that, you know, if you really can see, then you can basically just do a scan. Wait, why wait for people to come to you, right? Just scan the whole Singapore. Wow, it's going to take three days. I might three days. Wow, three days, scan, scan, scan. Okay, uh, this is the name list. <laughs> All of them were gonna anyway. Yeah. But interesting thing is, in one of the sutta, in Anguttara Nikaya, book three, there was a sutta where the Buddha talked about there being three kinds of patients in this world. The first kind are those with or without medical aid, they will recover. The second, with or without, they will not recover. The third, without medical aid, they will not recover. But with medical aid, they will recover. And the Buddha said, for the, for the, uh, the, the presence of medical aid, is for the third kind because they need ma. the first time don't, don't need they will recover on their own but even for the third for the second time that will, will die anyway the Buddha said care should be given to them so even for those today will be considered terminally ill confirm that one the Buddha don't say ah, don't waste resource ah, just dump one side yeah. to have compassion for them to still care for them in which case then all three we should care ma. is there a reason why we should not care for any of them yeah. Yeah, the trouble is when we start to when, um, think of this due to karma we may end up either not not do adequate prevention or self care or not do adequate uh, prevention or self-care for others as well because we may think well you, if you cannot you cannot anyway karma what then why should I bother helping you yeah, but that's not the attitude yeah. oh, can be very dangerous become a, a fatalistic view mm. okay any other thoughts your fatal is Fatal. Fatalistic. F-A-T-A-L-I-S-T. Fatalistic. Yeah. Which, which, which other fatalistic is there? I thought faith. Fatalistic. Faith, huh? Based on faith. Oh. Like I saw there are certain groups that they say that the virus will not attack them because certain unknown force is protecting them. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't label. Okay, okay. So oh. Yeah. oh, oh, no. Fatalistic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. One of the Philippine religions, uh, ah. which is led by Tiboloy, uh -huh. they said that all of his disciples is protected yeah, by God. Oh. They are exempted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he said this in social media. Wow. Yeah. Okay. He better hope that none of his disciples fall sick. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you'll cause the. Uh, so in, in this kind of difficult times um, unfortunately uh, easy for for people to capitalize on it and capitalize on people's fear you know and say oh you believe in this or that or you do this um, in the Buddha's time there are so many of the rules and incidences where doctors are involved you know Dr. Jivaka he appeared in many of the texts yeah a, a good number of our rules is due to him 
and it's related to our physical health. Yeah. So I in case if today you come hoping to get some magical cure or protection and <laughs> 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 your refuge, the refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, Sangha is your protection. Your compassion is your protection. Yeah. What he needed was a travel. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> I read this article. Yeah, I think I read something like that before. Yeah. Mm. So, do your do your washing. Yeah. Uh, have compassion for one another. Yeah, and patience also, because there will be more and more people who is driven by fear, and then act irrationally. Yeah have patience for them, have kindness for them as well. Yeah, not just for those who are having the virus, but also those uh, who are driven by a different kind of virus. Mental virus, fear. Yeah. Yen xiao san zhang zu fan lao. Yen xiao san zhang zu fan lao. zhen ming liao. Puyen Zhe Zhang Si Xiao Chu. Okay, come.